So, what's natural sciences? You have to study like rocks and mountains. Um, no, actually natural sciences is just science like biology, chemistry, physics. Actually, we do study rocks. Since you clicked on this video, I'm assuming that you already know what natural sciences is, but in case you don't, it's basically the subject in Cambridge that you choose if you want to study any sciences like physics, chemistry, biology, earth sciences, material science, pharmacology, um, psychology, etc. etc. Um, a common subject combination for natural sciences is doing maths, B, physics, chemistry, and material science in first year, and then in second year, you would generally do two physics subjects and one math subject, and in third year, you would do physics, and then maybe you would go on to do a master's or whatever. But I decided to do something a bit strange, and then I decided to switch, basically, um, yeah, because I basically decided to switch, which I could talk more about in another video if you would like, but that's not the purpose of this video, so so we won't do that yet. As for today, I'm going to be mainly talking about my experience as a student there and some things that you can't find out from just the website alone. If I'm totally honest, I'm just gonna say outright, Natsuki is such a difficult course. And in this video, I will be talking about how exactly it is difficult. So first, just about the general course structure. Natural Sciences is one of the subjects which has, in first year, the largest number of contact hours. Um, you study four subjects, so in my, like for my case, I studied Physics, Maths B, Chemistry, and Earth Sciences. So per subject, there are three lectures per week, which means there are 12 lectures in total. And an interesting thing about being a Natsuki is that you would have 9 a.m. lectures on a Saturday. So you would have six working days a week instead of five, like most people. So if you like the main thing a Natsuki, first year Natsuki is known for basically is complaining about having lectures 9 a.m. on a Saturday. I kind of just also want to describe the environment in like a natural sciences lecture for you know, some point in the faraway future when we can finally have in-person lectures again or debates or something like that. But um, most Natsuki lectures go kind of like you just sit next to some people probably from your college and everybody just like has their head down writing down notes as quickly as possible because if you like miss 30 seconds of the lecture, it's just like the le rest of the, just the rest of the lecture doesn't really make any sense at all. So everybody's just like, Nobody talks to each other that much, except if you're already friends. I would like suggest making some friends as quickly as possible. <laughs> okay, so apart from lectures, there's two other parts of the course. One part is supervisions. Um, since you study four subjects, you will have four supervisions per week, one for each subject. And a supervision is like small group teaching. And the third part of the course are is practicals. So I'm not entirely sure how practicals will work from now on with COVID, but practicals back then were generally like um, five hours, five, four to five hours uh, for physics and chemistry, I think. And those would be once a week. And labs, I don't think a lot of people, I think the general consensus with labs is that most Natskis don't really like labs. This is because they are very tiring. Like, you would just work over a long period of time and generally, like, everybody was already exhausted from from lectures or whatever, so it would be quite exhausting. I'm, I'm not, like, I've ne I don't think I've ever met anybody who said, I love labs. So if you have to do physics labs, then physics labs are in the Cavendish Laboratory. The Cavendish Laboratory is quite far away from the city centre. Okay, and a fourth and not really talked about aspect of the Natsuki course is that there is some computing. I think in first year there was MATLAB and then in second year there was C++. The exam format is pretty basic and kind of what you would expect from any sort of like um, exam, physics exam, maths exam. It's basically just maths and physics questions. You can search up some past papers online as well. Like, in first year, Natsuki is one of the most difficult courses 
in Cambridge. That's my, my personal opinion. And I say this having also studied an essay subject, which is what I'm doing right now in third year. Because firstly, because of the contact hours, and then secondly, because of the nature of the content and how you have to understand something to be able to even start doing any work related to it. For example, if you do an essay subject, like I'm doing now, you don't necessarily have to read everything. Even though there are like reading lists, you don't have to read everything. You can only read like the relevant aspects of your essay and then you can choose to specialize in certain things. That makes it easier for you like in your workload. But if you study physics, math, etc., you have to understand everything to be able to do the question. You have to know, you have to understand what's going on in the lectures then. And then you also have to understand everything that you've learned so far that past term as well as remember like be able to recall it and because there's so much information that they're feeding to us i mean not feeding there's so much information that we have to post because there's so much information that we have to process it's pretty easy to forget some things that you actually already understood back at the beginning of term and so to do a question at the end of term it's like you have to go back and look over like three like notes from three weeks ago or something like that. So I know I basically complained about being a Fiznatsky for this whole video, but you know, there's always good things and bad things to every single thing. So some good things about being a Natsuki, I would say are, is that the course does have quite a lot of flexibility and options. You can personal, like you can really personalize your course and make it specific to your interests and whatever job that you might want to do in the future. There's also some flexibility with like being able to change subjects. Like for example, I studied physics for two years and then I switched. I have no complaints about the quality of the teaching, uh, except that the amount of work they expect us to do is crazy. But apart from that, like I don't have any complaints about like they don't teach well. Also like you meet, I feel like you can meet quite a lot of interesting people like very some intelligent people whose brains work on another level to mine um yeah and you can like also be like oh this the cavendish lab is where they discovered some atom I, I'm, I'm not too sure what or, or like oh this is where isaac newton discovered gravity or uh i actually like he didn't discover it in cambridge but whatever or like you know stephen hawking stood on this bridge it's definitely something intellectually challenging or just challenging in general so if you would like to challenge yourself or like you know develop into a tough resilient person who is used to using their brain a lot then this is the subject for you something that i kind of wanted to touch on was employability and whether like subject um whether you can apply for a lot of jobs with this degree i think that is pretty different depending on the subject that you decide to specialize in later on. For physics, I guess quite a lot of people studying physics later go on into research or um, become like a proper like professor type person or scientist, like legitimate scientist. Um, if you want to like apply for other jobs, most of those don't really list physics as a degree that they want although you can still apply for them and basically we learn quite a lot of math so overall do I think that do I think you know studying natural sciences studying physical natural sciences is worth it I still think it's very difficult unless you're like super super well unless you're like as like unless you're a small proportion of people who find it not so difficult <laughs> that it's difficult like yeah super difficult but I mean you know people should do some difficult things to like grow or and but it's definitely not like an easy degree I think I think everybody would agree on that and there is sort of like this difficulty in balancing your social life with your work or at least there was for me so 
that might be something that you want to consider if you're thinking about applying for natural sciences as opposed to applying for another degree. Okay, so I think like I just kind of ranted quite a bit about the sad life of a Nazi, but um, hopefully you found this video useful. I just, you know, tried to be give like an honest account of studying natural sciences at Cambridge and especially for physical natural sciences. I think it is very dependent on the person and obviously I can't make that kind of judgment because I don't know anything about the viewer who's watching this. I mean, in the, at the end of the day, I don't really have any regrets. I do enjoy my course now. I do appreciate everything I learned in the past few years and the hard work that I put in, so I wouldn't really change anything. Um, yeah, but I just kind of wanted to tell people in the hopes that this would help them to make a decision or if so if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up please share it to anybody who might find it useful or interesting and i will see you next week so please subscribe if you would like to see that cheers actually we do study rocks Actually, we do study- Actually, we do study rocks. Actually, actually, we do study rocks.